Hello there, welcome to The Truth. Ooh, we've got a million subscribers now and we'll do the truths where we want to. Barack Obama has said that the media exaggerate the threat of terrorism and ignore climate change. He's right about that, but is there anything he could do? I mean, what's his job? In an interview with Vox.com Monday, President Obama agreed that the media has overhyped the threat from terrorism while downplaying the risk of climate change. It's difficult to argue with that fact when 26 Americans have been killed in jihadi attacks in the US in the last 10 years and 5 million people a year, Dara estimate, die as the result of climate change. So that's 26 jihadi deaths and 5 million climate change deaths. But those climate change deaths do happen in poor countries so they're not as important. A new study published yesterday finds climate change exacerbated the worst drought ever in modern Syria, aggravating social unrest in the country and helping to push it over the brink into civil war. So that's an important point. I suppose this is where we have to engage our own personal humanity. Right, I can't get food anymore. I feel, I mean, even on a personal level, when I'm a bit hungry, I become irritated. So you've got a whole country of irritated people with no access to food. And then a group comes along and goes, we've got some ideas that are a bit wacky and extreme and involve brutality, but you're hungry, aren't you? Yeah, I'm bloody hungry. If you spoke to me a couple of weeks ago when I could grow corn, I might not have been so willing to join this jihad, but now, I'm interested. Is there anything else I could consider? What's that explosion in the distance? What are these oil pipes being planted in my former farm? They are actually connected to the anger and hunger you're feeling. Where do I sign? You don't even need to sign, here's a gun. Climate change led to crop failures, sending 1.5 million people migrating from farms to cities. Climate change pushed up food prices, aggravated poverty, and helped hasten the revolt against Syrian President Bashar al-Assad. So I can feel that there's like sort of part of you already goes, no, it can't be that. People shouldn't, there's no reason for people to do anything brutal ever. But there are reasons. Even me, I don't want an explanation for why people are violent. I kind of just think, don't be violent. But the, the, these events occur because of conditions. So if climate change is causing 5 million deaths and terrorism is causing 26 deaths, why is climate change largely being ignored and terrorism being vehemently promoted? According to Monday's report, the Syrian drought, worsened by climate change, was a key contributor in the ensuing four years of conflict. Conflict that has led to at least 210,000 deaths and forced more than 10 million people from their homes. That is the perfect conditions you're describing there for terrorism, for mayhem. Now, what is causing climate change? Well, the countries that produce the most carbon are the USA, Russia, Germany, China, and the UK. So we are contributing. Now, what is it that causes these carbon emissions? It's capitalism is what causes it. Companies like Exxon, that last year made 44.9 billion, make that money as a direct result of 210,000 people being killed and 10 million people being displaced in Syria because their social conditions are being destroyed because of climate change. The story we are told though is one of terrorism, not a story of climate change. Why? Because Exxon make a lot of money from climate change and they need terrorism to distract you from that. The report's authors conclude, quote, human influences on the climate system are implicated and furthermore, a drought of the severity and duration of the recent Syrian drought has become more than twice as likely as a consequence of human interference. So Barack Obama knows that the real problem is climate change and that's having a greater impact than terrorism. Why not change the law then? Because companies like Chevron, Exxon, Mobil, BP and Shell fund the American Legislative Exchange Council, ALEC. Hey, ALEC's here. What's ALEC going to do? Oh, ALEC, he sounds like a nice guy. What's he going to do? Well, he's going to prevent us from ever curbing carbon emissions that might affect their profit. Are there any side effects to that? Oh, yeah, it's going to cause loads more terrorism and ultimately the destruction of the planet. Come in, Alec! <laughs> you are a great guy. That's how legislation happens. Vote if you want. Oh, yeah. You heard that right. The president, according to his spokesman, believes drastic changes to the environment pose a bigger threat in the daily lives of Americans than terrorism. But he's 100% right about that, but it's very difficult to convey that message because the media makes money from climate change. For example, Fox News, that's giving you this bit of information, is owned by Rupert Murdoch, who's got a, a stake in Genie Energy that makes money directly from interests in the Middle East, in Syria, I think, actually. So it's extremely direct relationship. So the media is invested in corporations 
loosely because it is itself a corporation and directly because of affiliations with energy companies. It's one self-preserving system. Politicians like Barack Obama, in spite of his personal feelings, can't do anything because the people that vote on the policies are bribed by the energy companies and other big businesses. Their votes are controlled by big business. So the truth that terrorism is a problem created by climate change and not as bad a problem as the climate change itself, that truth is never revealed because the politicians have been bribed and the media makes money from that situation. And those remarks coming the same day we learned of the death of Kayla Mueller, the fourth American to die in the hands of ISIS since last summer. Uh, Harris, how many Americans have died from climate change? Well, I can't give you an exact number. I can't give you an exact number. I'm on the news right now. Ask me about my goddamn dress. Well, it's 150,000 Americans will die by the end of this century if climate change continues at this rate. And this is Americans that live in cities, not Americans in farmyards that we don't particularly care about. Ones that wear ties to work and are probably white are going to die as a result of climate change. To answer your question, also though, it is a bloody nice dress. You should know you're, me you're better by now. You're also making the same facetious point that I have, have read made, and that's that climate change cannot dress up cross continent borders, look like a neighbor, plan, plot, sit in the cut, and then blow something up. But that doesn't matter, does it, if it's worse? <laughs> like, like, in a way, this is one of those times where Fox News has accidentally made the pertinent point. Because climate change doesn't provoke the same visceral reactions because it's amorphous and difficult to understand because it's global, the story isn't being told. We can all understand, I am a terrorist. <laughs> we can understand that idea. Just tell me about that, I am a terrorist. I can understand that. Don't try to tell me that there's a much bigger problem that hasn't got a slogan because I won't be able to think about that. That's why when our species first began to flourish, we had religious and ritualistic practices that directly connected us to the land. We worship the antelope because we eat the antelope. It's our little god. We worship fields of wheat because we eat fields of wheat. Now we worship ridiculous bloody celebrities and we've forgotten what's real. That's the most important thing. The science is off. We just had a snowstorm two weeks ago in New York. They told us New York City was going to get blown out. We we had to give up our freedom and sit in our house, no cars on the road. Well, Guess what? The models were wrong. You're quite right. They were wrong about it snowing. That is a much more serious problem that you had to sit in your house for half hour and couldn't drive giddily and pointlessly around in your car. You're Kayla Mueller's family and you hear the president say that climate change is more dangerous than terrorism. You would vomit all over the White House if but that's you could. if you take it literally. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are going to take things literally. We're on Fox News. No, I think this is all about that the president wants to make corporations the enemy. That's much easier. Yeah, it's really easy to make corporations the uh, enemy when they dominate and control the planet, regardless of what's in government or who's in government. Poor Barack Obama, he's got Nick Clegg syndrome, just sat in an office somewhere thinking, oh, bloody hell, there's nothing I can do. He's so much more comfortable fighting back against the 1%, against companies who are changing the environment oh, rather than against ISIS. Rather against ISIS who were created by those corporations. There will always be ISIS as long as you have those corporations. I don't want to apologize for Barack Obama either. I mean he's nominally the president of the United States. Unless our political systems are absolutely meaningless this guy should be able to do something. And what he could do, I mean we've spent a bit of time thinking about it, withdraw troops from the Middle East, particularly if they're there only to enforce the corporate interests of major companies like Exxon or some of the many arms companies that sell $200 billion worth of arms every year, including Lockheed Martin and Northrop Gr Grumman. I can't even pronounce that properly, but that's because they don't exist in my real world. I'm like, I am a terrorist. I can picture that. Make it illegal to profit from Middle East, Middle Eastern interests so that our only involvement is humanitarian. No one there can make any money from resources. No one. Why are you here? Not to make money. I'm here to help. Are you making money? Mainly money. Mainly money. Right. Can we trust you? Well, obviously not. Invest in green energy. 
use or take all of the profit from Exxon, all 44.9 billion, given that that's, that's Exxon's money, right? After they've paid everyone's wages, had their windows cleaned, printed their business cards, cards, wore the plants if they've got plants in their office, maybe they don't have to be sort of ironic and sarcastic of them to have it. Take every single penny and use it to set up green energies. Because the story we're not telling is the planet is what we live on. We're connected to that. We either have to ditch capitalism and save the planet or ditch the planet and save capitalism. Our leaders have chosen the latter. Here's some more policies President Obama might want to consider if he is actually interested in changing the planet. Make it illegal to have media conglomerates that dominate the global narrative. Break them up. Don't have one person controlling 80% of bloody American media output or a few people controlling it. And make it illegal for people that have interest in media to also have interest in bloody fossil fuels. Unless these systemic changes are made, we can't save the planet. And if the President of the United States can't make a difference, if the President of the United States has to sit impotently in a chair going, Oh well, we're exaggerating terrorism, which we caused, and we're ignoring climate change, which we caused, because we, the people that are supposed to empower, that were voted for by the people, actually can't do anything because we're controlled by big business, then the whole all things are sham and we need a revolution. True news, subscribe here. Nose is a tool that is abused to fool you and to leave you scared and confused. Trolls is like the nose. If the nose was true, I want some trolls. Let's have some trolls.